Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another timeless pick a card reading. Today in the jar we have got three English poets. We've got Lord Byron, Keats and Shelley and this is an important introduction. I am actually going to make a note and suggest people do watch this introduction because I did want to talk about an important thing when it comes to viewing these readings. It is very possible for people to experience this thing called reading saturation. It's very possible to have watched lots and lots of these readings and then if you watch too many of these readings it will start to become flat or um, it won't be enjoyable anymore. And what I want to say to my viewers is please know to take breaks. Uh, sometimes I think people have very high expectations of what a reading can deliver. You know, a reading like this is just a brief 10-15 minute thing. It's not long. It's really intended for entertainment purposes. It's intended for, you know, just giving you a quiet space within which to reflect with your own thoughts. But you're being with someone. So it's kind of like digital friendship. But the thing about readings like this is that they are limited and they can't do some of the deep soul work that you might need to do with somebody in person. So say for example with an energy healer or an energy practitioner or a good counsellor or a good psychotherapist or something like that. These readings can't do that and I just want to make it clear that you know, these are just intended to be lighthearted and for amusement, for entertainment. They're not intended for more than that. So if you watch these and you find that you leave a reading feeling deflated or empty or depressed or something like that, then my advice is to take a break from readings. You can try another reader, but the thing is, if because the other thing about pick a card and I know this because I watched a ton of them last year and I was really enjoying drinking them in because I was also learning the system and I didn't know I'd be doing this myself one day but now I am doing it so I guess that's why I had such a compulsion to watch so many of these but if you you know watch a lot of these and it feels like oh gosh it's the same all the time or you know then it's time to take a break from this category altogether uh, or, or to try another reader but you might even find that you try another reader and then the same thing happens so my advice is to take a good long break the other thing is that if you're leaving a reading like this and you're feeling disheartened or empty or wow that had nothing in for me um, if you're having that experience that also might be indicating that the time that you would spend with a reading like this which may be 10 to 15 minutes if you just watch one but then if you watch all three and you feel that way then I would say that the that time is actually better spent doing something like meditation if you can establish a meditation practice because the thing is that you're looking for answers in the outside world and you're not finding them. So that means your soul is missing you. You need to spend time with you. You need to come back to yourself and spend more time with yourself. So that's another thing I would recommend. Uh, that it might be that you need to work with, as I say, like a qualified energy practitioner or counsellor or, or something like that. I worked with a lady, for example, in London. She wasn't qualified, but she was a lot older than me. She was really, she was, you know, and she'd studied all these energy healing modalities and techniques and all these things. I worked with her for a period of about a year. I went and saw her every week and I did a huge amount of work on myself. And the other thing I will say as well is that you don't have to do all that work. Okay, that's another thing to bear in mind that healing can be instantaneous, natural and totally free. Okay, so you don't need to 
work with somebody. I did. I personally did. I benefited a lot from the work I did with my energy healer over a period of about, yeah, it was about a year. And then after that, I think I worked with somebody else sort of every few months. And then I worked with Heidi Sawyer and that, that was fantastic. So that was a couple of years of my life there. But um, I do that because I like that kind of thing. But like, you don't have to, you know, and the ultimate healing is self-healing. It's free. It shouldn't cost any money. Um, it can be instant. And meditation, if you can establish a very good meditation practice, that will serve you far better. So I also want to say to people that if this kind of thing, you know, uh, you're looking for something from this that it's not delivering, then what I would say is please um, spend the time. Don't spend the time watching these. Please spend the time, you know, putting in place a really good meditation practice that would be so amazing and i will put a link actually uh, in this video to a really good i hope that video is still around it's a really good video that teaches basically transcendental meditation it teaches you how to use a generic seed sound like ah or om you know that kind of thing and it teaches you how within the space of about 15 minutes to get to that beautiful place where you are incredibly still and you know you, you're not using your mind so that would be a good thing so i'll leave that link in the description below so that you will be able to watch that and i would recommend that don't watch these if, but please watch them if you enjoy and there are so many people who are enjoying these things so that's why i make it because you know i, I get really good comments and um i also want to thank as well with all my heart, those of you who have uh, donated, it's incredibly kind and it does keep me going. And yeah, your money just goes into the bills for the website and all the various things. Um, I'm hoping to buy a new deck one of these days. I will do that. So, <laughs> But um, thank you to those people who do that. But you don't have to. And one of the other reasons I love doing this work is because this is something for free. Because my readings, when you book me via my website, that is expensive. And I do want to offer something to people that is totally free. And that's what this is. So why don't we get into the groups uh, as usual. Please choose from between group one, group two or group three. And I will see you in your reading. Hi there, group number one. If you chose group number one, then you are in the right place. Let's take a look and see what cards you've drawn through. So we have got the chariot upright. Beautiful. We've got the hierophant upright. We've got the Eight of Pentacles, upright. We've got Leadership. I love this card, it's so cool. Look at that big sky, gosh. We've got Aldebaran, the Pleiades, it says here, Life is a magical experience. Become the muse of your own verses. And we have got the void. This card has come up so many times. But you know, it makes sense because this is that kind of time, you know, for a lot of us with this heavy Saturnian energy, Saturn in Capricorn, Pluto's there. You know, a lot of us being asked to isolate, be at home, that kind of thing. So this, this, well, why don't we keep going with this card? I mean, yeah, a lot of people are in this void space. They're wondering what's next? What am I manifesting? What is coming my way? Well, what I can say for you is that there is a lot coming through. There's a lot that's wanting to be birthed through you. I think you're going to be very busy. We've got this card here, the Eight of Pentacles. 
It's a kind of great industry at work. There's an industriousness that comes out of this card. You can see here we've got these two, I guess these would be beavers or something and they're you know building a bridge to be with each other. They're hard at work here, they're building, they're constructing, they're, they're making something happen. You're going to be asked to lead, I do think, as well. Or there's something coming for you that's going to require more from you, perhaps, uh, than you've, you've ever given. I think you're going to be very busy. I think you're going to lead the way. And I think there's something about you needing to follow tradition here. Perhaps this does you know, this is interesting that this one's come up because this is about tradition and this is about, this can be about contracts as well. Tradition, contracts, money, the Hierophant. Sometimes this one is associated with Taurus, I do believe. I'm pretty sure I've got that right. So there is a stability here as well. There's, there's movement. Now, with this, there's movement. And we've got the two sphinxes of different colors here, the light and the dark. And one of the things about this card is that there is movement forward. So you're going to be leading, you're going to be busy. There's something about you dealing with tradition. Okay, how you go about that, that's going to be for you to figure that out, whether you have to follow tradition or you have to go against tradition, you know, it, it could go either way there. But here, we've got a card where there's forward momentum, there's movement, but you're having to kind of um, manage these two opposing forces. Okay, so as you go forward, it's kind of, yeah, light and dark. You're, you're having to you're having to work with these two. So this is, this is really interesting energy here. Then we've got this card, which is saying, life is a magical experience, become the muse of your own verses. So what you're going to create going forward, your creativity, it's saying to find the inspiration within. And that you are, you're not going to need to take inspiration from the outside world. So whatever this next step is that you're creating, this is really interesting because this could be some ancestral thing as well. And maybe that's the inspiration that you're taking from within your ancestral line. Wow, that is interesting. So that just popped into my head there. But it's saying become the muse of your own verses. It's like don't take the inspiration from the outside world. There's something from within you that you need to create, that you need to birth, that you need to, to bring into being. Because, And that all of this activity and all of this you know, busyness and excitement and creativity and all that you're going to birth, that's going to come out of this void space. It's because you rested. It's because you took the time to do this that you're now going to be able to birth all of this. This is quite incredible what's coming through for you. It's a lot of work. It's going to it's going to keep you busy. There's movement and there's something about leadership and there's something about yeah, I'm even thinking you drawing inspiration from your ancestral line in what you're about to create next. You know, that's a way of going within and drawing the inspiration. Let's take a look and see what we get in terms of poetry. Gosh, this would be interesting. Curious to see what comes through. Okay, so this one says, ooh, Wow, I was never afraid of failure, for I would sooner fail than not be amongst the greatest, or not be among the greatest. I'll read that again. I was never afraid of failure, for I would sooner fail than not be among the greatest. This is great. This is a perfect quote for this group because 
we've got this leadership card here you're being called and look at that this is all about movement this is all about doing this is all about action when i wrote this quote earlier this morning i loved it because he's saying i'm not afraid of failure i would sooner fail than not be among the greatest what i got here was keats is saying that i had to go the main priority for me was to go and you've got this card here that is so perfect this is all about going this is all about going for it that i am going to go for it and that's what he's saying here i would sooner fail than not be among the greatest he had to go for it and he realized that like failure could happen you know as i'm going forward i could fail but if i don't go forward i'll never be able to be among the greatest you see like you have to go for it you have to move you have to do something i would sooner fail than not be among the greatest basically he's saying i'm i am going to the place of the greatest i am traveling there i am moving there i'm moving my chariot to the place of the greatest and if that means i have to fail along the way so be it but i'm still heading to the place of the greatest I love this quote. I just think it's such a great quote because there's so much confidence in here. There's so much, and this thing of failure, it's, there's like an acknowledgement that part of the journey up includes failure. It's like, well, yeah, you might fail. You know, it's this thing of don't be afraid of it. Just fail and keep going forward. You know, I, there's a real confidence in here that I just, I just absolutely loved. Wow, it's, I'm so glad this quote came for this group. That is perfect. Okay, let's see what else comes through. Nope, oh, that's two. Take one. <laughs> I think there might be one left over. Who knows? Let's see. Uh, okay, what is this one? Aha, uh -huh, Lord Byron, okay. If I do not write to empty my mind, I go mad. <laughs> okay, yes, Lord Byron. I mean, what a creative guy. But like, this is important. As you go forward on your journey, it will be important for you to structure yourself, for you to write things down. And this doesn't have to be, I mean, Lord Byron wrote poetry, but because I've got a real work context here, I'm getting simple things pop into my mind, like write a to-do list, like keep a diary, like, you know, write what you have to do for the week ahead and then, you know, tick it off or, or do a, 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 you know, check the week that's been. I started doing that recently and it has transformed my life. Just looking at the week ahead, jotting down some things I want to do, then each day, writing down okay what do i want to do and then reviewing it all at the end of the week because i used to do that monthly but now i've started doing it weekly it's so good and this thing of if i do not write to empty my mind i go mad yes this is true you've got to jot your ideas down and then you park them and then you know you're able to execute them when you have the time okay so this i think yeah there is some structure that's needed perhaps you need to structure things a bit better but group number one there is amazing energy here for you on the table i am super excited and i'd love to hear how this went if this was a good reading for you please do let me know but i'm not getting any sense of anything challenging or difficult or bad or i mean look it, it feels like you've got to go you've got to there's a there's a movement there's energy and you've got to act so group number one i'm excited for you going forward let me know how this went in the comments below and i look forward to seeing you next time hi there group number two if you chose group number two then you are in the right place let's take a look and see what cards you drew through and as with any of my readings, please take on board what resonates and please discard what doesn't. So we've got the six of wands in reverse. Wow. 
We've got the nine of pentacles upright. How beautiful. Love that card. We've got the knight of wands upright. We've got the card wonders. I love this card. That looks like an amethyst crystal or something. Amazing. We've got the word action here and this beautiful ballerina dancing under what looks like a full moon. Wonderful. And we've got this card here which says a lit a lichil. Guardianship and protection. Do not fear to lose what you already have. Your heart is a guardian and your soul the brightest star. Oh, that's stunning. I love that. Your soul is the brightest star. And that is something that if you've ever had a reading with me, in my introduction, I usually do a little bit about free will, uh, the importance of that. And um, yeah, you, your soul is the brightest star, that's for sure. Okay, let's take a look and see what we have here. This is amazing. This is a little bit like group one. This is to do, I think, with work. Again, and you're being asked to act. You're being asked to go after your wealth, to create and generate. And I think this is very much inviting you or asking you to share what's within you share the wonders within you share what you have to give to the world the the only card where there's a slight the energy is just not you know 100 percent is this one here which is just indicating to me that you might feel a lack of recognition at times you might be working very hard at the moment and you might not be feeling recognized by the people around you so that that's really the only energy here that you know isn't a hundred percent wonderful kind of thing but there's so much good on the table here you've manifested a lot of really great things and the way to tap it is through action this is kind of coming through twice we've got an oracle card saying action you know dance express give give the wonders that are within you give that to the world so there's a real load of encouragement to express to give to do to act to not sit around but use that fiery energy get on with it make it happen you know this is that kind of don't worry about the star transits or whatever or you know if you watch my monthly and it said you know well actually i don't know you'll have to synthesize all that <laughs> but like sometimes in the monthly i'm saying things like well this is a month to rest but you know what these cards are saying go for it there's a there's a real go for it energy and there's there's this thing about you and your this is solitary enjoyment of wealth that's what this card is about and either this is saying that this activity is going to help you tap your wealth or it could also be saying that this is really a time it's a time and this is a time of gratitude to be grateful for what you have but that more is coming like a lot more is coming that's what i'm i'm getting a strong feeling that there's wealth and abundance that wants to come in for you so yeah there's definitely this kind of act and you will achieve receive you'll be able to draw your wealth down to you kind of thing i think this is a card about don't worry if you're not feeling recognized or if you're not being recognized or that kind of thing i think this is a you don't have to worry about that because this is coming in so or it's certainly there for you anyway because we are all infinite if you look at where your sun is in your chart that's your place of infinity and we are all infinite we are at our core all wealthy and abundant and there is no lack at our core 
So you'll be able to tap and experience that more if you act on it and you know that that will really the momentum you need you need to put your energy in to get that momentum going i certainly know about this because i tend to be pretty slow in my life with that kind of thing my momentum is a bit slow but anyway um let's have a look at this again do not fear to lose what you already have i think that's what that says do not fear to lose what you already have your heart is a guardian and your soul the brightest star yeah your soul the brightest star i was just talking about the sun and infinity definitely your soul your sun it's your place of creativity and don't don't fear to lose what you already have look at that this is a card of abundance as i was saying and this you have this that is you you are this you when when we experience our core selves our soul who we are is infinitely abundant you are that you are abundance you are love you are you are the universe and these are you know unless you experience these concepts they remain just these nice ideas but you really are that it's a thing of experience and if you watch my introduction where I talk about the need for meditation, through meditation, you will be able to experience more and more your true core self. We also have the symbols here for Libra and Scorpio. So this is quite interesting. And I think this Scorpio kind of represents this. That's where the wonders are, because look, this amethyst is coming out of the darkness. And Scorpio can be a place it's that hidden place, that low light kind of place where, where a lot of gems and jewels are that I think you're being asked to go there. And this card is saying, don't be afraid to go there. Go there. You, you, you know, okay, it's low light conditions. Maybe it's a little bit dark there, but, you know, that's where the gems are. Go and get them. You know, that's what this is saying. Go and get the gems. Be fearless. You know, don't, don't be afraid of the dark kind of thing. You're a light being. You're an eternal being. You'll be fine. You know, you know that. You know that you are. Okay, let's take a look and see what the poets have to say today. I'm very interested to know what will come for this spread. Let's take two. Hang on. Oh, okay, take that one. Oh, okay, there's three. We're taking three. We're doing it because there's two left. Group number two, I did not plan that. You are lucky to get three, and the lucky person is getting three, group that's getting three. All right, let's take a look here. What does this say? Ooh, philosophy will clip an angel's wings. Yeah, this is a kind of don't think too much, don't overanalyze. I love philosophy. I mean, for me, that's I have fun philosophizing, but I see what Keats is saying here. I do think that he's saying, don't philosophize too much. Be in that soul space of yours. And, and we were talking, weren't we, earlier about experiencing, that it, you need to experience what you are at your core. And that's also what this is asking you to do. Who you are and what you are at your core, you're an angel who flies, you know, you're free. And this is kind of reminiscent of all that roomy poetry where he's like, you know, why do you crawl through life when you've got wings? You know, Rumi always talks about that kind of concept. So yeah, I love that by Keats there. That's wonderful. Let's take a look at the next one. Oh, wow, this is good as well. The great instrument of moral good is the imagination. Beautiful. Again, we've got this wonders card. Look at that. I think you're being asked to use your imagination at this time and moral good see some people might think that's you know rules and and this kind of thing no imagination creativity we want to create the new earth we want to create a beautiful life here on earth and i definitely think this is a sign that you are here to do that definitely imagination is so important great instrument of moral good is the imagination 
Yeah, because that's that's where the angel is flying and free, you know. Wonderful. Gosh, well, these quotes are great. I wonder what this one's going to be. Let's have a look here. Oh, beautiful. You got Shelley again. How lovely. Oh, wind, if winter comes, can spring be far behind? Yeah, exactly. So that, look at that. That's Scorpio. This is so perfect. My God, this is just incredible. You are being guided to kind of go into the darkness but not in a shadow way not in a you're meant to heal some deep dark thing no 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 you, you're meant to go into the shadow into the darkness to bring some wonders there's something that's within you or that's i don't know this is incredible you're kind of being asked to venture into the darkness into winter and to bring out the gems there's some, and I think this is, there's some artists who are watching or something. There's something to do with creativity. And that there's some gems hidden in the darkness that you are meant to bring out through your actions. And it's, it, you'll profit from this experience. So this is some, yeah, interesting thing here. Wow. Wow winter comes can spring be far behind because you know this because you are this your heart is a guardian and your soul is the brightest star yep you're protected so you're protected as you investigate or as you go deep into some unknown thing or you explore you're going to find some gems This is fascinating. Wow, group two. Well, I'm going to leave this reading there, but thank you so much for tuning in. And if this reading had some good messages for you, please do let me know in the comments below. I love hearing from you. I apologize if I don't get back to you um, quickly. It's I am very busy, but thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there, group number three. If you chose group number three, then you are in the right place. Let's take a look and see what cards you drew through. Now, as with any of my readings, please take on board what resonates and please discard what doesn't. Okay, so we have got the six of cups in the reverse position. We've got the page of wands upright. We've got the Page of Cups upright. Isn't this just the cutest Page of Cups you've ever seen? Oh, I love this. I love this so much. This little otter. He's so cute. They're so playful. That's a perfect Page of Cups, actually, now that I think about it. The people who make these decks are so clever. Gosh. Okay. Truth. Wow. That's pretty fascinating. That's a face up there. My goodness. Well, this is quite a multi-dimensional, multi-layered image right there. Okay. We've got this card of self-reflection. Again, this is really beautiful, kind of slightly surreal. How does this work? Oh, I see. Yes, that is a reflection. Gosh. Wow. And we've got this card here, which is Ethereal Orbs deck. It says Albertain, reconciliation and serenity. In order to be approached by others, you first must encounter your anger. Okay, and we've got the symbol for Aries there. All right, let's see what we have here. This is quite fascinating. And this group is quite unlike the last two because this is not so much to do with the realm of work. I think this is to do, this is quite emotional, what's going on here. And I think, and I think this is to do 
with yourself. I don't, I'm not getting a vibe of uh, a romantic partner, even though we do have a page of cups here, but I'm, I think this is to do with you yourself. There's some memory or something from the past that maybe something's holding you back a little bit. Let's investigate. Let's have a look here. I do get a past feeling and something maybe from childhood or some memory. And you're being asked, I think, when I saw these two earlier, I got a strong sense, the Page of Wands and the Page of Cups, is that you're asked, you're being asked to renew your commitment to yourself. You're being asked to renew your relationship with your own self. Isn't that interesting? That was definitely the vibe that I got. There's a lot of self type stuff going on here. Self-reflection. Are you able to, to kind of cut out all distractions and just be totally alone? This is really important. So this, and I'm also now getting this could be you or this could be somebody in your space or somebody that you live with or somebody that you're around. Maybe you know somebody like this. But I'm definitely getting, uh, yes, a thing here. This could be somebody else. This might not be you. All right, I think I know, yeah. Do you know someone who, oh my God, the phone just rang. Can you hear that? That's insane because I was going to say, do you know someone who cannot be alone and who always needs <laughs> phone rang, always needs constant noise or always needs like the TV on, always needs distraction or music or do you know someone who cannot be alone and maybe maybe this is that you grew up with this person i think now i'm okay none of this occurred to me earlier it's all occurring to me now and that means i am probably tuning into somebody's energy here okay good this is good so i think what this is is you've grown up with someone who cannot be alone who doesn't know their truth and they are yeah like constantly needing distraction like the tv is always on or you know they go to sleep but then you, you can hear the radio in the background this, this person just can't i know there's somebody like that here it, i don't think it's you who's watching because people who come and watch these are generally you know quiet spiritual people who are not like that kind of person uh, so i think there's somebody in your space okay but it's not a romantic thing now here we've got reconciliation and serenity in order to be approached by others you must first encounter your anger sometimes people who are like that they they're running away from themselves okay and that that is the truth of it that's why they need constant distraction they need to have the TV on all the time or they need to because they can't bear to spend a moment alone. Why? Because the truth will surface and the truth is probably something that's not all that pleasant here. We do have some anger on the table here and I get the sense that you are interacting with a person like this. I don't think it's you. I would say if it was you, okay, I would, but I think this is somebody in your space isn't that interesting if this is not that then what i was saying earlier could be the, the thing about yes there's a memory from childhood and you need to commit deeper to yourself this is some renewal of self-love renewal of self-commitment renewal of you know if if you are deep on your spiritual path doing your work this is you just renewing that, just renewing that commitment to your own self. If this is only just about you, you are going to find, you're gonna go deeper 
by renewing the commitment to yourself, by investing your time in yourself and your self-development, your self-love, all that kind of thing. But how fascinating that it could be another person, yeah, who's not romantic, but I do believe someone you grew up with. This could be like a parent or a sibling or you know, even a friend or something. I had a friend of mine, she told me, we've got two left, I don't need to shake it. Um, she told me she went on holiday with this friend of hers and she said that this person, she said, I couldn't believe it. She said, we're in this beautiful countryside place. She said, it's really quiet and we've all turned up there for the serenity. And she said, yeah, that word is here, isn't it? Serenity, yeah. And she said that, you know, we're in the house together, it's all wonderful. And she said, but she wakes up She's got the hairdryer going. So then she's got the hairdryer going, which is fine. But then she starts talking to herself. And then she puts on the radio. And then she turns off the radio. Then she starts singing. And, and what she observed over the time of, you know, sharing a few days in this holiday house in the countryside with this person, she observed that this person cannot be quiet, cannot be alone with themselves. Isn't that really fascinating? Let's take a look and see. I'm so curious now to see what these are. Oh, how fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Byron. That's magnificent. Yes, always laugh when you can. It is cheap medicine. I tell you what, these people in our lives who are like this, you can't bear to spend a moment alone being quiet. They are funny. And that's what my friend, she, she did get annoyed with you know her friend bless her i mean she she did get annoyed but it was funny when she recounted the story to me it was absolutely hilarious we weren't laughing at her i know all these i, I know that person as well i love all these people but it was it was just amusing you know how different people can be you know and i and yeah like we we and I, th and I think we did when we all had dinner one time we all talked about it and it was hilarious like she was there yeah so we weren't laughing at her but it was like it was funny because she knows that she doesn't like to be alone or to be quiet and that's fine because everyone's different you know and that's wonderful that's what makes life really cool right it's like I love that people are so different to me you know um yeah I just we gotta celebrate the differences it'd be a very boring place without that all right cool a drop of ink may make a million think that's super cool and it may be there's something within this experience if it is something from childhood write it down maybe this is the beginning of a best-selling book or something i don't know because look at that one drop of ink may make a million think that's that's a bestseller right there, isn't it? You know, uh, if you're writing this story and a million read it and love it, well, that is something that you must do. You must share this story with the world. But yeah, I think I like, the quote I love the best for this group is, yeah, always laugh when you can. It is cheap medicine. And for me, I do think that's when I know something is healed. You know when you watch comedians and they always, they'll try a joke and half of the audience will laugh and half of the audience goes, ooh, like that. And, and the comedian will say, oh, is it too soon? You know, have we not healed? You know, and it, it, yeah, it, it's this kind of thing. You know that you've healed a situation totally. When you can be easy with it. I mean, look, there are some things that one will never laugh at. Obviously, there are some things that, you know, so I get that <clears throat> but uh, it, I always think and I always think that good comedians are you know like you look at Robin Williams to me he was an outstanding genius comedian who in my opinion was a healer I believe he had Rahu Moon conjunct Sattva Bishak Aquarius something like that he was a terrific healer he was out to heal the collective consciousness and yeah he did through laughter laughter is high vibration you also look up it's funny mum and i were talking about this the other day a lot of the very enlightened beings they were hilarious like you know osho was really funny um eckhart tolle he can really make a person laugh 
and you look at these top evolved spiritual beings and they are very amusing so you know uh, group three I hope this has been a good reading for you and if there is something that you're resolving or working through then please um, you know just commit just commit to self-love and that that really resolves everything so group number three thank you so much for tuning in if you would like to let me know how this reading went i would love to hear from you otherwise i look forward to seeing you next time <laughs>